Hello, uh, my name is Jakub Prasik. I'm Iñaki Malerva. We are both software engineers at uh, the Continuous Kernel Integration in uh, CKI. Oh. No change. And it's actually our first time presenting <laughs> for DevCom, so it's going to be wild. Uh, yeah, we are in the CKI team, uh, as we also want to call it, Cookie. We work uh, testing uh, kernels and kernel patches on uh, our daily basis. As you might know or not, if you've ever been on the kernel team, uh, this is not an easy task. So I would like to start with a nice graph or that it should be working. Well, things happen. Uh, let me check. Okay, so <laughs> internet problems. So I was saying, uh, we do testing uh, kernel patches and kernel trees. This is why what kernel development used to be previously. On one side, you had the developer making a patch. It used to, used to take some time until the patch was ready, it was reviewed, and was sent to the QA side. On the right, you have the QA side, which uh, has the patch for a few, t few days, week, in the base case and uh, checks and finds if there's any issue with that. If it happens to find an issue, it returns the patch to the developer's side. This probably a few weeks later, and the developer had already moved on with the development, has, was working on another patch, so we had to spend a lot of time trying to remember what the patch was about, the what the bug was about, what the new feature was about, and find the new issue that the QA team found. So for this reason, we realized that we wanted to push CI into the kernel continuous, into the kernel development. Uh, I know probably most of you know already what CI means, but just in case, uh, continuous integration is the practice of building and testing each change automatically as early as possible. This means that using a Git uh, workflow, even every time you push a commit to a repository, a pipeline gets created when your change is, is to go through a build, some tests, and wh whatever other checks you have to do uh, to check that your changes match the crit criteria. So, but, okay, but how? The kernel is a huge project. You cannot move kernel development to GitLab or GitHub uh, in the best case. Uh, you need to find out a way to put these changes on big communities. Uh, usually it takes time. You have to prove that your that with the things you are uh, trying to put are really worth it. You have to, to prove that your ideas have value, basically. So this is our talk. It's not going to be about the details of what we did. Uh, we are going to give our opinion of the things we think were great, of the, thing we, of the work we did, uh, what we found really valuable. And if you get curious and want to know more about what we do and how we do it, I would recommend you to go watch the talk. Uh, Red Hat joins CI party, brings cookies um, that was given by our uh, partners at um, Linux Plumbers the past year. Yeah, so a lot of this is going to be based on uh, our experience with uh, various uh, people from different companies, from uh, you know, the community. Community. Uh, there was a hackfest last year in Lisbon that was organized by our colleague Veronica, and we think we learned something from it. And this is kind of our view on what you know we learned from that, and you know how it kind of plays with our experience of working on the project. So uh, prepare for cookie analogies. This is like the first one. Uh, you have to provide the value. As Inyaki just mentioned. So imagine like a big package of cookies for a couple of cents. So what do you get? What do we have? How do we provide value? So we have the hardware, some of you know this. We have a lot of enterprise hardware, hardware that you cannot buy anymore. Uh, sometimes it's just a one piece of hardware or something. It's very special. And ideally, you know, we want to use that and test on all of it because. There's probably a driver in the kernel somewhere, there's probably a bug in it, and probably someone's going to be very unhappy when you know, they hit it. 
So uh, we have a lot of VMs, uh, GPUs, uh, different uh, peripherals, sound cards even. And also the value is test, like find bugs. Uh, there is a short list here uh, that wasn't updated at all. And obviously there is a lot of test suits that have been in Red Hat for a long, long time. And that haven't been onboarded, haven't been stabilized, but can still provide some interesting value. And uh, another way to bring those values is you know, the subject matter expert, the uh, developers, the maintainers of the tests that actually you know, can uh, somehow help with the issue, they, they know this stuff. So the value, here's some kind of call choice, I don't even know what it is. Uh, basically, it's just about like, boom, we send the report to a ma uh, mailing list, and uh, then there's the interaction. And then you know someone realized as well, maybe it's a good idea to have our upstream kernel tree tested by you guys. Uh, so this is what we happened. Uh, we hope to continue you know, uh, improving this interaction, finding bugs. And in good tests, I think we're late. Helps. Here's another uh, example. This was a Compiled error that was discovered very quickly thanks to the fact that uh, our build took uh, about like five to ten minutes uh, on x86. So you know, in ten minutes you can actually have that report. You push to the git tree somewhere, in, or there there's a change in uh, upstream git repo, and in ten minutes you know the maintainer has some kind of result and. Uh, our builders being like, uh, quite, quite fast. So the example that I like the most is, is this one that was Greg, an upstream uh, kernel maintainer, dropping uh, Canary. And uh, it got picked up by our uh, CI system. It was just a you know, big fact that this isn't supposed to be merged, that uh, in kernel edit, it, it, any boot test should be the fact that it's been up the machine. And run a kernel on it. Some systems, uh, some CI systems didn't pick it up. Some uh, ours did. So you know, this kind of makes me, and that's just my personal opinion, but it makes me feel that really just good tests can not, uh, help us make good CI because you know, with what we have to be in infrastructure, uh, we can run it every time. That's actually actually the basics of CI, I think. Uh, here's an updated printout of a, or a printout of a page of Max we found. Uh, it's being updated on GitLab. It's number one. Though another way I think that we can make developer, developers like cookies is well use appropriate equipment. It's not how I like to have my cookies, but you know the tool it's in a perfect shape. That's exactly what it should. So there, there's a short list of uh, tools, mm, uh, test suites to use uh, that are helpful that work for us in some way. It may not work for the community always, it may not work for some people, but uh, for example with the Linux test, uh, test project, we you know, have been advising like kernel people and they don't know what to test, they put it there for kernel scientists testing or functional testing. Uh, and you know it takes time, learning takes time, uh, changing hard uh, workflows is difficult, it's difficult to adapt. But in eventually people get into that mindset, well I know how to use it, I can actually add the test in there if I need to. So that's good. That kind of works for us. And, uh, you know when you drop a test in there it's going to be around all sorts of Git trees also all, also all sorts of kernels. I probably and I kind of have a doubt that we don't there is a kernel tree we don't use LTP for. Uh, another good tool is GitLab. It solved a lot of our issues that we have with Jenkins for automation. Uh, it's uh, yeah we, that's where we have our pipelines, RCI, and also where uh, all of our code could be is. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, yeah, there are runners in OpenShift that actually run the pipelines that generate the test, test, 
those recipes and they submit, submit that to Beaker. Beaker is our uh, provisioning, basically so where our machines live. Uh, for those not, of you not familiar with it, allows us to power on uh, and off the machines and how manage them, use them in a somewhat responsible way that is not perfect, but it does mostly what we need it to. And uh, here's some uh, a few, you know, uh, all during the breakfast, I think, uh, cooperation with other people. There are multiple different ways to do this. Uh, there's lava, there's ironic, which does roughly the same thing. Uh, but, you know, to be able to cooperate, no one's going to just, you know, drop what they're doing. So maybe there's a way to at least make sure that it gets somehow share the hardware labs somehow uh, have one way to submit what we need to test into any, any kind of uh, testing setup uh, without you know, ju just using that resource, just consuming it. Uh, there is test beaker, uh, test beaker, which is in GitHub, kind of works out for us, that's where we have our uh, tests that we run on our stream journals. And that you can touch me too. Uh, I don't think you actually need to be careful for all of those tests. So there's a main file. Uh, I know that uh, those tests you can basically separate it. Uh, you can make it that it doesn't really need to be careful at all if it does. But yeah, so, so it's not, not too hard to use to reproduce those results, I think. Uh, another thing which kind of works for us is KPDB. That's where our test metadata lives, uh, and that's things like you know what hardware, what test, what uh, environment variables are we using, uh, how do we constrain the test to like a specific runtime so we don't burn resources. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of hoping that we can open source this because there's some hard hard uh, earned data. You know, gain as we kind of uh, work on these tasks as we move forward and add more of them. And you know, having some kind of community in there would be nice. Like, uh, it would be helpful. Very space. Uh, well, another tool which kind of works for us uh, is Patchwork. It's a patch tracking uh, software that we use. Uh, and again, you know, there can be some obstacles, for example, we kind of have difficulties merging the changes we need, working with uh, the upstream maintainers. But, you know, it's going to get itself sorted out somehow. And the last tool I have mentioned is kind of Kajian Boot, which in the traditional way we build our kernels. Uh, maybe, uh, our internal runners are faster, uh, so it's kind of helping to fix that up. So, another way uh, is to get books. So, I have to help myself a little bit. So, most of the interaction we have kernel developers is a little bit like, uh, hey, your kernel is all testing, and they're saying, yeah, what, what, what is this crap? And this sometimes happens because uh, they don't write the test. It's quite QE, to find another person that's not all in the company. And um, because of that, it kind of, it's hard to make them trust, uh, you know, at first, like what we're doing. And because of that, um, you know, we try to improve that interaction. A uh, way that happens is kind of having a solid foundation and being able to for people to plug in somehow. And that's uh, oh sorry, I forgot that I don't have a big, uh, good picture, so I get lost. And yeah, this is no good picture, so uh, you can look at the pretty cute while I'm that. <clears throat> the good way to plug in into that is KPDB, which I already mentioned. Uh, it's again where our test metadata lives and uh, where we decide oh, we're going to use this test and this architecture because it makes only sense to run it on this. 
that's a description the test suites that are being used. So uh, there's a tiny bit of takeaway from this, from all this, from these two cookies. And basically, you know, there's a lot of like tools that we use uh, that I already mentioned. And basically, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that if like, you do something for kernel development, for kernel testing, you have like, you know, colleagues, friends, uh, you do, uh, or acquaintances, then, uh, you know, just think about like what you're building, how it interacts with the community, what are the inputs, what are the outputs, and if someone's going to actually be able to use that. You know, we're trying to make it so that this, this is something that obviously uses a long time. Okay, so, well, I don't know if any of you have ever seen a kernel mailing list, but those places are really crowded. There's a place that hundreds of developers use to communicate, to share patches, to review, to accept patches. So if you want to, the people to take your, your work into account, you need to be very careful with the mails you send. Spamming a mailing list is not anything that is going to be good for anyone. So we developed a few tools and used a few strategies to keep ourselves from pushing the spam onto the mailing lists. For example, one really nice thing that we have, it's like we have web tests. A web test is something, it's a test we know is not ready or we don't really trust, so we wave it, uh, so we run it on the, on the end of the test, so we pro, uh, prevent it to affect other tests, or other stable tests in some, other, some way. But also, we don't use those tests to calculate the final result of the stage. For example, you had uh, 20 tests that passed, but one uh, wave test that failed, that failed test, is not go it's going to be reported, but it's not going to affect the result overall. The stage is going to be passed anyway. Also, when using a bigger pool, you have hundreds of computers, and it's uh, really, use uh, really common to find like, a, a broken machine or something like it's going to affect your tests. So, well, it's uh, someone has to go and manually fix it or open a ticket to the team that is in charge of fixing those machines, but we need something to act quickly. So we maintain a dynamic list of what uh, are the most likely to fail hosts. Uh, so I try to avoid running tests on those hosts specifically. But also, for example, when putting a new kernel tree to test, you don't know how it's going to behave, if you, your parameters are well tuned or what. It's, it's not, I mean, it's easy to put a new tree, but every tree is kind of different, every kernel is, has some differences. So we first uh, want to have these uh, trees under review. That means that every failure that the, the pipeline generates first has to be manually reviewed by a person, by a member of our team. And then if the, the failure is a real kernel failure, a bug, or whatever, it's the, the report gets approved and it's sent to the mailing list. This way we avoid sending infrastructure problems or our internal problems to the mailing lists. Uh, but well, as anyone uh, eating cookies doesn't want to have to open many packages and layers of uh, packaging to get to the cookies, the kernel maintainer doesn't want to Open, have to open 10 tabs to get to the test results or having to dig through emails. So we try to keep our reports as short as possible, provide only the results that matters to the, to the developer. For example, it's amazing. I mean, we really like to tell people, yeah, we run these thousand tests on these many machines and architectures, and everything went well, but the developer doesn't care about that. They need what failed and where to look the failure. They want the tests. They want the logs. They want uh, something that will help them to reproduce these errors. So keeping the, the reports short and concise is not something easy for everyone, but it's really something that we got from the our uh, from previ previous times that we went, we get together with the kernel maintainers, and that was one of the feedbacks that they just want results, not the uh, bloated emails. But the work doesn't end in there. We send the reports, but as Jacob said, this testing is new and the, and the kernel developers, uh, maintainers, doesn't, don't trust 
the tests. So they always come back asking for questions. How did we test the stuff? How, how they can reproduce it? Where, where are the logs? So we're always trying to get to have a big interaction with the mailing lists. We, there we have people, mainly Veronica, always uh, replies to the, mail, to the mails, uh, to the maintainers, explaining, showing the logs, showing the failures, trying to point to the code or the patch that introduced that failure. That it's really important because uh, the maintainers uh, feel this feedback from ours. It's not like we only say your patch failed, go look why. We try to be, uh, to be with them and to give closure to the issue. Okay, it's a bug. Okay, let's go, let's open a report, let's follow this report and try to get it fixed and make sure that the bug is fixed. And it's, if it's an infrastructure problem, we will obviously go and fix it. Uh, also, in the Linux Plumbers, we had a hack fest and we realized that many people were cooking the same cookies as we were. There are a lot of people that love their cookies and they want to share. So now you see on the mailing lists a lot of uh, different groups posting the results to the mailing list of their own tests. So we realized that we needed a common place to put all this stuff. So we are constantly generating a lot of data. We have tests, we have builds, we have merged revisions, a lot of things that pass, that, that are skipped, that are failed. So we needed a place to put everything, all the information we generate. So internally, we developed what we call the data warehouse. It's a, a place where we put all our stuff, all the information we generate, it's there. It's a place that we hope our de developers in Red Hat can go and uh, check if the patches were tested, if they failed, why they failed, get the relevant links and logs. Uh, also get some statistics and uh, it helps us f uh, identify failures, for example, tag these failures, uh, link these failures with upstream failures or with uh, infrastructure problems or whatever. It's like a big overview for the work we are doing. But also, we are working with the kernel CI, which is uh, a part of Linux Foundation. We are making this uh, big kernel CI DB, which is a place where everyone who's running tests for the kernel can go and push their data. So hopefully someone uh, would take uh, good care of the da this data. Someone needs to take make metrics or statistics or get information about the, how the kernel is doing. So this is the place where we want everyone to push the data on a standardized format, which is not easy. Everyone is testing different on different hardware, use different terms for different tests. So we are trying to push forward to unifying these standards and getting the best information possible. And uh, well, someday probably only send one report to the mailing list showing the results of everyone who's testing the kernel, which is what kernel maintainers need, one result that has the information about the test. So well, what's this about? What does this pipeline look like? We said we wanna, we're, weren't going to dig too much on the pipeline, but we wanted to show you what the pipeline looks like. This is a really short description on what we are doing on top, you can see different sources like Patchwork, Git, Koji, Copper, GitHub, GitLab. Patchwork is what we, as Jacob said, what we use to track the mailing lists. Tracking mail, mails is not easy, it's a text uh, formatted for humans, so we use a tool that is called Patchwork for that. Git are the Git trees. We are, for upstream, we are only testing some maintainers' uh, trees, official tr Git trees. Koji and Copper are internal tools, GitHub and GitLab, it's because as we have all our, most of our code on GitLab and GitHub, we want to test every change. If you hopefully submit a change to our pipeline, we have a way to run the whole pipeline on our infrastructure and to test if the changes are correct or not. All this generates what we call triggers. Uh, the big hack we have around GitLab is that GitLab CI is planned to work to run CI on the source code that is hosted on the project. But that's not the case, that not the thing we are doing. We're using GitLab to host our pipeline, but we are testing upstream code, code that it's on another tree or on another source. So we have to get the sources and do that. All that mag magic is uh, on, tri on the triggers that generate a pipeline depending on the source uh, of the change. For example, we have the lint, which is, uh, we have, runs a, a few tools that check that the patch is correctly formatted 
according to Red Hat standards. So that's only executed when a patchwork trigger uh, is created. Also, merge, build, publish. Publish is because we want the maintainers to be able to check what we did. So we also publish the kernels we built. It's like uh, we merge all this, we, we, we built it, but just saying it is not enough. So we are publishing the kernels so that the maintainers can test, can really test what we did. And the test, well, well, the test stage here is in GitLab, but in fact, test stage, the, what it does is uses kernel um, KPET and KPETDB to create a list of hosts where it wants to run in Beaker and send the tasks to Beaker. When the test finishes running, the, test, the results come back to GitLab and the pipeline finishes with a result depending on the, what happened on Beaker. As I said, we sometimes have a review stage depending on the configuration of the tree. If, that's, uh, if it, the review stage is there, it's going to wait for a, maintain, for a member of our team to review the result and approve it or not. And when everything is ready, it triggers a report. The, the reporter grabs information from all the stages, some information about the merge, about the build, about the tests, and generates this big, this big email that we send uh, to the maintainers with the information that they need. So here's a short slide about collaboration. Uh, the first one being like what we can do for you, for the community, for, for us, we can be okay. Well, we can test more Git trees uh, in theory. Uh, actually, it's a much more simpler process than I thought. Uh, you basically just open a PR in the lab and in theory that uh, can get merged. Uh, I don't think, I, I don't know if uh, any yeah, like, uh, like official approval, approval is necessary, but mostly it can get out go pretty easy, especially if those changes from that get to get merged into something like mainline, where we're going to hit the issues anyway, eventually. So it's really better to grab that low hanging fruit to stop the problems uh, as soon as possible by doing, that, uh, by doing just that. Uh, the other thing you can do is basically run tests with each build, which is CI does, and I don't think it's ever truly appreciated until you know something goes good. Uh, and the last task, yeah, uh, last thing, yeah, the data that is being generated that has been pushed uh, upstream into KCIDB, that's uh, you know, something also people can build their applications on if they have any reason to process kernel statistic data. Uh, so, uh, how can you help? Well, uh, you can help to improve the tests if you like, in the test speaker. You can uh, help report bugs uh, or report issues if they happen. And that's it. Uh, now it's a time for a Q&A session, but uh, you know, we're going to be asking questions. Uh, no, just really just one. I'm curious to see, to know like uh, who of you have uh, never heard of CK before and could use it in theory in some way, or know a person that you know would benefit from this. Please raise your hand. Um, so everyone here actually already knows CK. Okay, it's, it's great. Uh, so that kind of renders my um, follow-up question kind of invalid because I was curious to uh, see like what the barrier of entry is, how difficult it is to get people to interact with us in any way, uh, you know, to make a PR in uh, some of the projects, whether it be for tasks, Python definitions, anything. Uh, so now it's your turn. If you have any questions, we are very happy to answer them to the best of our ability. Are there any challenges in uh, staging the kernel builds? Because it takes about, like, I have a 24 core machine, it takes about, I think, seven or eight minutes or so. But I imagine because it takes that much CPU time to build, like, one kernel, is there any, how is that staged? 
Uh, well, uh, so I'm going to try to repeat the question. Uh, the question was how uh, is the kernel building staged? Uh, two to answer that basically we have uh, builders in open shift and uh, we can you know like add CPUs to it. Uh, it it's basically virtual so OpenShift really helps us to be able to tune how much power we need to make that build. And there's a lot of caching being done uh, with the folders. Thank you, Veronica, Major, rest of the team, for getting it to like, five minutes. And yeah, luckily there's uh, more people here of the team that will be happy to provide more information about that. But basically, it's I think the secret is scaling uh, as much uh, in parallel as we can, like, uh, we, don't, we don't use one machine for all the building and testing, we just uh, use OpenShift to get virtual machines and run the stuff in there. So... Okay, uh, yeah, this is one of the parts that I think is fleshed out very well. OpenShift uh, works for us this way. Any more questions? So thank you. I'm going to try to repeat that. I'm not sure if the microphone caught code, it. So uh, the question was, where there, uh, are we going to uh, build a beaker instance like upstream? Uh, well, I can't really speak to that because you know, no more promises about like what, what we do. But uh, it's a it's a unique question, and currently I don't think it was like considered. There are uh, it would it would cre uh, create quite a lot of Problems, I think. Okay, uh, Beaker has a big downside like, that setting up a Beaker instance and a Beaker pool, it's it requires quite a work on the setup and also like overhead of a machine that needs to be dedicated to the Beaker orchestration. But we are trying to work on uh, moving some of the builds and the tests to uh, Amazon or a cloud provider, so we could uh, um, make it public. Um, there's a, uh, I mean, the main thing is that those machines actually be ble uh, like uh, somehow accessible to you know upstream community that would be, uh, I think, problematic, especially with some very precious hardware that we have one piece or something. So. Can I ask you what your interest in Beaker is? <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.